If you've ever taken a marketing course, you've heard about the, the traditional marketing funnel based on the ADA model. It's the one that starts from awareness and ends with action. But here's the problem. How do you actually apply it to e-commerce? Well, in this video, I'll teach you how, after eight years of working as a web analytics specialist, I connect e-commerce data to the marketing funnel. So this way you can identify leaks, fix them, and turn more visitors into buyers. Hello, data people. I'm Robert from Clicks.ly, and I'm here to help you understand and analyze data to make better decisions in e-commerce. Now, there are a lot of different variations of marketing funnels, but they are all pretty much similar. And here's a 30 second recap of the ADA models uh, stages. So you have the awareness, that's people discovering your brand. Then you have interest, so people start engaging with your brand. And then you have desire, people are just starting to consider your brand. And then action, they've taken the preferred action and in our example, bought a product. I would like to also add um, one more stage and that's loyalty. So people turn from one-time buyers into repeat customers or start uh, to spread the word about uh, our brand or product. Now this is a flexible model because you can easily add or remove stages and maybe in your company somebody has already defined these. So just ask around. But basically the idea behind a marketing funnel is to determine in what mindset the person is because this will impact the way we approach them, especially when it comes to marketing. Because people that are already aware of us, we can talk about our features, whereas people that never heard of us, I think we have to first tell them what we do and why are we different. And the idea is to take the person from one stage to another until they become loyal. There is no limit how fast people go through this funnel. And actually that depends really on your niche um, because it's very different to sell a car than a skincare product. It's, the whole process is very different. Okay, so how do you actually track each of these stages using your e-commerce data? Well, the simplest way is to define an action on your website to the funnel stage. So uh, let's map those uh, right quickly. This means awareness becomes a site visit. It doesn't really matter if they come from ads, social media, or through blog posts. As long as they visited your website, you can count them at, at, in this stage. They are at least aware of your brand. And don't worry if it's a little confusing right now. In a minute, I'll just show you how it all looks like in GA4. Then interest becomes product view. This indicates they were curious enough to see what you have to offer. And there's a good chance that someone clicked on an ad that came to your product page, but that's okay. This means awareness and interest uh, happen at the same time. Next, we can uh, consider them in desire stage if they add something to their cart or maybe talk to the customer care team. Now, for some of you talking uh, to customer care is not a strong enough indication that they're in this stage. But for me, if you took the time to engage with the brand, you are considering it. And all of this indicates that they are clearly interested in your product. They just need a bit more information to make a real, uh, make a decision. And then you have the action stage and that's basically when people buy something. But uh, look, your job is not over yet. Many people in e-commerce think once purchase is done, that's, that's it, you're done. You don't have to do anything. But that's just not the case. And the customers might still return the product, have buyer's remorse, or just don't know how to use the product. So they'll uh, have a bad experience with it. You can easily influence the after purchase experience and push the person to the last step of the funnel. That's loyalty. And loyalty is something you can track by getting a repeat purchase, a positive review, or a customer referring other customers through referral program. These are all indications that you have now an advocate for your brand. I want to quickly mention that data is not created equal and you should be only looking at data that is relevant to your role. That's why I've created a cheat sheet which shows you the most important metrics and KPIs specific to different e-commerce roles. You can download it by clicking on the first link in the video description. Okay, next let's take a look in GA4 where you can see the data for each stage. Now, if you wanna see a funnel in Google Analytics 4, you just need to go to reports and from there you go to monetization and purchase journey. In yours, it might be called e-commerce journey as well. So it depends on the installation. So if you click on that, you'll see a funnel like this and it starts from session starts. So that's people coming to your any of your pages. Then you have view product, add to cart, begin checkout and purchase. And next to it, you see this number. So basically it tells you how many people came from this step to this one. So how many people completed the step? Here it's 21%. Out of people that came to the website, only 21% viewed a product. And then out of these people, only 26% added something to the card. And then you have the same steps here. It goes lower and lower. 
This is kind of how the funnel works in Google Links 4. You'll notice that you have this begin checkout, which we don't have in our ADA model, but that's fine. This is just uh, adds a little step in between, which is uh, which gives you a little bit more information. And on top of that, uh, if you know you if you're not happy with this, if you want to have less or more steps, you can always export this uh, funnel to the explorations. That's here, explorations. You, and you can recreate the same funnel in there. And actually, you can already update it here as well. So if you're not happy with something, you can update those. I just don't have the rights for this specific uh, property. In addition, there's also a bit extra information here. So this is the percentage is abandonment rate, which is basically the opposite of um, the completion rate. And same thing here. We have the abandonment rate. And then if you hover over, there's a bit more information about how many people actually went through it. And then lower here, you also have additional information like the device type, and you can change from here, country, uh, browser, and so on. Usually I use device ca uh, category or country. Then if you scroll back, the way I like to look at this is I always identify which step has the biggest drop off. In this case, the lowest completion rate. Clearly this one and this one, these are kind of the problematic. If you have issue between these two steps, people coming to your website, but they're not actually going and seeing a product. This is usually a, a problem of the traffic. So you're sending the wrong type of traffic to your website. Uh, for example, your targeting in ads is off. Maybe you have blog posts or articles which are not really related to your product. So there's a lot of traffic coming in, but they're not really interested in what, you're, what you have to offer. So this is uh, one thing. If you want to find out exactly what's going on, uh, you can always either go to acquisition and I like to look at traffic acquisition or in an engagement, you have also landing page. That's the first page people come to your website. You can get more insights on that. I have uh, separate videos on both of those reports. The third thing you could also do is add a filter and then look at specific, for example, people that come from ads, what type of a funnel they have. That really changes a lot depending on the channel. In any case, if you have issues this, between these two, it's usually that the traffic is wrong type. They're not interested in the product. If the problem is between these two steps, so between view product and add to cart, in this case, usually you have a problem with the product page. It's not convincing enough. Maybe the pricing is off. Something is off with the product page or the product itself that is putting off people. So they see a product, but they're just not interested and they go somewhere else. Maybe a competitor is offering the same product for cheaper or a similar product for cheaper. Um, this is something you need to look into. And I would look into it probably with some sort of a qualitative research or maybe using surveys. You need a bit more information from your customers that visit the uh, product page to see what's what's holding them back. Then the next step, if you have problems here, so if there's a big drop off between these two, in that case, you probably have a problem with the cart experience. So people not getting it. Maybe they can find the a coupon called field or it's just because of delivery costs because at this point once you've added everything to cart that's when most people start looking at hey how much is actually the threshold for free delivery or if there is any free delivery this is all usually happening in the cart and just remember a lot of people also use cards as like a wishing list they just put stuff in the cart then they remove it uh, and maybe a week later, they'll come and actually buy it. Uh, so sometimes you have a high add to cart rate, but then there's a big drop off between uh, add to cart and begin checkout. In, in some cases, it might be okay just because the way people use this feature. And then lastly, if you have a big drop off between begin checkout and purchase like here, 50% of people that start the checkout don't finish it. This, this shouldn't be like that. It should be closer to 80 or 90%. Usually the issue is either with uh, you're missing some sort of important payment method, for example, in Germany, if you would not include PayPal, you would lose a lot of sales because it's very used. It's a very popular payment method there. Or uh, maybe your delivery costs only show up at this. So uh, maybe once you get the shipping address, you can calculate the shipping fees and people see it and they're like, whoa, this is way too much. I don't want it. So you need to pay attention to what you're doing there. In some cases, it's just very bad usability or you're asking too many questions or it's just not clear and people abandon your checkout. Now, one thing you can see here is the loyalty because it's kind of hard in GA4. You would need to set up some custom stuff uh, to track, use custom dimensions to identify if the customer is new, returning or maybe VIP status, or if they have written a positive review on your website or elsewhere. And then you send that uh, information to GA4 and you'll be able to add that step into this funnel. 
And just in general, you also should make it easy to leave a review and, and to refer a friend to, to their product and get some, you know, some benefits from it. So, for example, you get a discount and your friend gets a discount. Uh, that way, everybody wins. And if you do add some custom stuff, you can always add more steps here. So you can add that loyalty there. But it's definitely something I would look into because you do want to have long term customers instead of just one off. And hey, if you want to learn more about how to investigate why people are not buying from you in GA4, then check out my GA4 for e-commerce course, where I have a whole module with the deep dives into why your revenue has gone up or down in a certain period. Just click on the link in the description. Now you know about the e-commerce funnel and how to see it in GA4, but just by looking at data without knowing how to turn it into insights will just waste your time. That's why you should watch this video next where I'll teach my six-step system to turn data into insights.